That show aired, we got all these phone, e I mean, phone calls, emails from black women everywhere who were convinced that lighter skin was better and they were willing to do anything and everything and go through all these crazy extremes to get lighter skin. It was crazy. Check this out. I think light-skinned women are better than dark-skinned women. I don't have big lips, big nose, nappy hair. All my features are good. Halle Berry is the same complexion as you, and you don't look better than her. <laughs> In an age when cultural diversity is something to be celebrated, you might find it shocking to know that some people are trying anything to erase their ethnicity. People like this think that light-colored skin is a sign of beauty and that dark skin is a mark of shame. And they're using artificially created chemical compounds to scorch their skin and bleach away the pigmentation that gives them their natural color. I want to start undressing myself completely and pretty much get every single area, every single spot. In the process, these people are exposing themselves to unknown and untested chemical compounds that can lead to mercury poisoning, psychiatric disorders, and more. What makes someone so desperate to lighten their skin that they'll try almost anything they think can bring results, no matter what the costs? And the lighter it is, the better it is. With me now are Maya, Merlene, Brenda, Latavia, Letitia, and Latasha. A lot of loves there. Um, and they all admit that they bleach their skin. Let's start with you, Maya. How long have you been bleaching your skin? I've been bleaching my skin for approximately 10 years or more. 10 years or more, okay. And um, so, when you were 16, you came to New York. Tell me that story of how you well, liked it. I moved to New York with my sister, and the weather, the weather was really cold. It was so cold, and I lightened up, like, very light. And because there was no sun. There was no right. Okay. And it, I thought it was beautiful, and everybody, like, they would call me, hey, Red, come here, and all the guys, and I was like, wow. And then when I went home, it was the same thing. I was like, wow, everybody likes this lighter skin on me. So then you started bleaching. Mm-hmm. And then we have... We Sorry, because I started to darken back in Miami. Because you're from Miami. Mm -hmm. And then we have Brenda and Marlene. Now, you all are sisters. Yes. yes. And you guys have been bleaching, what, for four years, Brenda? Yes, four and years. tell me how it started for you. Well, it started back in elementary school. And, like, it was a black school, so there was a light-skinned girl in the classroom. And everybody liked it, her. Her hair was nice. She had all the advantages in the classroom. Like, she would be chosen to erase the board. And she was like, I wanted to be pretty like her. I would have it easier in life. And so you started bleaching because that was your inspiration. Yes. And then, Merlene, you were against it at first because you were scared your sister was going to get sick, but then you changed. Um, definitely. Um, I seen the transformation in her. And um, at first, I was telling her, well, you can get cancer, and it's not good. You know, you have low self-esteem. But after a while, I was like, wow, she looks beautiful. She's glowing. Why not try it and, you know, and see what can happen? And when I did it, I became lighter than she was. Did you think your sister was pretty when she was dark? Um, yeah, she was pretty, but... She looked at way better, lighter. Way better, lighter. And then we have Latavia. Am I saying that right, or is it Latavia? Latavia. Latavia. Um, you um, have a jealousy. Tell me about the jealousy that you have. I envied a lot of light-skinned girls in school because they always got ahead. They always got picked first, dates. So I became jealous. I wanted mm -hmm. to be like them. I even sense a little bit of anger as you talk about it and pain as you talk about that. Because it's, I'm always stereotyped and I hate it. So I want to become what they are so I can stop being talked about. Mm -hmm. And um, you have children? A son. A son, okay. Tell me about your son and, and what you think about uh, dark skinned babies. My son is black and Asian. Um, I don't date dark-skinned men, and um, I think about black babies, it is always stereotyped, and I will not walk around with a dark-skinned baby on my hip. So you, you will not walk around with a dark-skinned baby. Did you have a baby with an Asian man so that your baby would be lighter? Exactly. Yeah? Not the first time I've heard that. Okay, and tell me what is wrong with a dark-skinned baby on your hip? I become labeled as hoochie. It's, it's always a stereotype. 
because of, of a darker skinned baby? A darker skinned baby does not get the same treatment that a lighter skinned baby gets. When I take my son to the daycare, I see the darker skinned babies with snotty noses. They're never getting treated properly. And when I go pick him up, he's always on someone's lap. Because he's lighter. That's how I feel, yes. So, Letitia, you wanted to be lighter. You want to be lighter because they're of guys. Tell me about the guys. It's not just life. the guys. It's just um, past relationships that I've been in once I've gotten older. <laughs> past relationships that I was in, like three different relationships. All the guys cheated with a light-skinned woman, and they were all pregnant. So, mentally, that was scarred. So, they got the women pregnant? Yes. So it made you feel that they wanted to appropriate with something lighter? It's, it seems as though, yes. Okay. Um, and then Latasha, you started bleaching very early. Yeah. How old were you when you started bleaching? Well, my mom started bleaching us like five years old or something like that. Five years old? Yeah. Your mother bleached you at five years old? Mm -hmm. And what did that make you feel like as a five-year-old with your mom doing that? Well, I don't quite remember. I just know she say um, I used to like go on her cabinet and um, get it myself and put it on. And um, she saw a change and then she just started putting it on me anyway. So you were a lot lighter than you uh -huh. naturally be because of the bleach since you were five years old. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. <laughs> you have children? Yes, I have three boys and I bleach them too. What? You bleach your boys? Mm -hmm. So, Latasha, how often do you bleach your children? Um, in the morning before school, because um, it's like I bleach them because I want them to have a better presentation when they go to school. And so, being darker skin is a bad presentation at school. They, I don't think uh, society um, accepts dark skinned people well. Okay, so you bleach them, and how old are they? Uh, four, six, and eight. Four, six, and eight. Mm-hmm. And think the about middle the one, he's a little darker than the rest of them. So I bleach him a little bit more probably morning and night. So you bleach him more than once a day? Yeah, yeah. Latasha sent us footage of herself bleaching her children. Wow, check this out. There's my prescribed medicines that I use. Then I use scrubs, extracts, facial peel-offs, and natural scrubs. So then when I put my face cream on, that it'll work. First, she covers her face with a prescription-only bleaching cream. Now face close attention to all the areas that's darker. Then it's time for part two. Now I'm ready to do my kids. Three boys have to pay special attention to him. All the kids use the same extra strength bleaching cream Latasha uses, but little Christian gets an extra dose. You ready to go to school? Mm -hmm. All right. Her children are here, and we're going to meet Latasha's children when we come back. We'll be right back. Up next. So we're talking to mommy today about bleaching. Does she say that when you're lighter, it makes you better? Uh-huh. Do you think it makes it better? And later, we created a fake cosmetics company called Light and Lovely with a line of three phony skin bleaching procedures. It will give you the whitest, brightest skin that you dreamed of. a billion dollar business worldwide and we're hearing from black women who admit that they buy bleaching, bleaching products to make their skin lighter. Latasha just told us that she bleaches her own skin and she also bleaches her three young boys skin and I'm with them now. Hi boys. Hey. Hi. So tell me Brandon how old are you? Eight. Eight. And Christian how old are you? Six. Six. And Amarian how old are you? Four. Four. Okay. So we're talking to mommy today about bleaching. Because I hear mommy puts bleach on your face every mm. single day. Tell me, tell me about that, Brandon. When mommy puts bleach on you. It, it uh, gets out my blemishes and makes me lighter. It makes you lighter? And do you think that lighter is better? Mm-hmm. Why do you think lighter is better? It makes me better? lighter, too. It makes you lighter, too? Mm-hmm. 
And do you like that? Yeah? Does she say that when you're lighter, it makes you better? Mm-hmm. He makes me miles and make makes me better. It makes you better? He makes me miles and make makes me better. It makes you better? Mama mm -hmm. says that? Mm-hmm. Okay. So you guys like the bleach and you think it makes it better? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's every morning, Mommy says, okay, Mom does her bleach, and now, come on, Brandon, time to do your bleach. Yes. Yes. Okay. I'm going to go back and talk to Mommy, okay? Okay. You guys are good boys. Give me five. Give me five. Give me five. Yeah. Okay, I'm going back out, okay? Okay, stay right there. Okay, stay right there. Okay, I'm going back told that um, there was somebody in the audience that as this is going on has been crying a lot. It's you. Will you stand on up? What's your name? Sherilyn. You've been crying a lot. Tell me why. Is, is it Latasha? Latasha? Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. You said that she bleached her son, or sons, sorry. And I have a son myself, and I'm a single mom. And I think the most important job for a parent is that um, you teach your children to have a, a self-esteem and give build their self-worth and i think bleaching your children and teaching them that <clears throat> they're going to be better because they're lighter is like the wrong thing I, it really got me oh my god <laughs> what do you have to say to that this is a woman that she latasha she does not know you you're a perfect stranger to her but your story is bringing her to tears as a mother, as a, as a fellow mother. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry about that, but I mean, <laughs> I do it so that they can have a clear skin and it, you know, it presents well. Is, one thing that's interesting to me with you, Latasha, is that what your mom did, and I, I respect all mothers, so I don't mm -hmm. say this in disrespect, but I do think that it was not a positive thing for you I'm, as a young girl growing up. And her putting that on you is telling her, telling you that you're ugly, that you're not good enough, well, that you're less than. She always, she always told me that I was beautiful and pretty and everything, but a lighter complexion will bring it out more. And I just found it to be true. Yeah. But is there something inside that does hurt? There has to be something inside that hurts. I mean, things that, that people hurts. say when you're darker. Because when I was pregnant, I got darker and I had the, um, is a skin disorder. Like a ma the mask that happens mm -hmm. with pregnancy, the dark mask. And I got no attention from anybody, and people were like, you know, she's smutty and stuff like that. Do you think that you are harming your kids, their, 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 their health by putting that on them? Um, no, because I just started when they, um, when they got to grade level. So you don't think you're harming them? You don't think those chemicals at, at all could possibly be harming them? Something that you might not know? That there is some type of risk? Um, not if a doctor don't tell me. That's gonna be a generation. So your doctor has told you that it is okay to bleach your children? Um, yes. No, no he hasn't. No. 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 You know a doctor did not tell you that. <laughs> You're gonna sit here and tell me that your doctor said that? I mean, or you just they don't yes? have any problems. I mean, they don't they don't have any problems with it. I mean, you've sat get down with your doctor and said, "I put bleaching cream over the counter." Oh, bleaching no, cream. I don't tell them that. They never had reactions or problems with it. But so we have a doctor here today. Know. We have a doctor here today, and I I doubt that doctor is going to say <laughs> that it is helping for your children. Um, we have to take a break, but um, I want to ask Maya something. Uh, Maya. Um, on, on my show, America's Next Top Model, you said that you saw a, um, a split screen. picture of me. A split screen. A split they screen picture of me. They had one where you were really, really fair and one that you were really, really dark. Of a photo. And both of them are very beautiful. But I, on the, the lighter one, I was, I was intrigued by it. I, I stopped. My mom has TiVo. I stopped and rewound it to look at it. It was amazing. That's it. It was amazing. So... So you looked at that lighter side and yeah, said, Yeah, I looked that's... at both of them, but that's the one that I really liked. Like, you can see, like, they gave you freckles, and it's beautiful. Like, oh it's gorgeous. I was intrigued with it. 
So that side is more beautiful too. Yeah, and, and I I'm think not even that just saying this to say it. I was really attracted to the other side of me, and that's actually not retouching. We actually did that that day. My body. I wish I had footage of that because we actually painted me on both sides, lighter and darker. We were trying to represent white beauty and black beauty. Maya's mom, Maggie, is in the audience right now. Stand on up. Where are you? Um, how do you feel uh, knowing that your your daughter uh, is bleaching like this? I don't agree with Maya for bleaching her skin. Uh, I think that maybe she might have medical problems, like she might get cancer with the chemicals on it. Mm -hmm. I mean, in this day and age, we can be proud of our skin color. That's right, uh, Mom. When I was there, <laughs> when I was growing up, we didn't have black role models. In fact, we didn't even have black dolls. But today, there's no reason why we can't be proud of our skin color. It's all right. It's, Especially it's the since the President of the United States just might be a black man. This is a new day. Thank you. Up next. Uh, Letitia, I know that you've gone through some extremes to, to lighten your skin. I poured liquid bleach on it. Bleach? Don't hit the player, hit the game. These women are victims of our society. And later. Hey Tara, we are here in the middle of New York City, and today I'm going undercover for you to explore skin bleaching. Oh my God, would you look at that? with having lighter skin because they believe it will make them more beautiful. So they are literally bleaching their skin to get it. Um, Letitia, I know that you've gone through some extremes to, to lighten your skin. Tell me about the extremes, what you've put on, put on your face. Oh, well, um, I know everybody heard of the last straw. I got down to the last straw because nothing works for me. I have very sensitive skin. Everything irritates me. So um, normally I clean my face with like um, alcohol and hot water. So this particular night, you know, I was crying, I was upset, and I got a hot towel and I poured liquid bleach on it. Bleach? Yep. Yeah. Like bleach that we bleach our clothes with bleach yes. or bleach or mop floors with bleach? Yeah. Uh -huh. And you put that on your face? Yep, yeah, with a hot towel, yeah. And what did it do? It burned. Burned me. It burned. I mean, you. it it burnt. It felt like somebody had a torch on my face, and the next day I was, you know how you peel a scab off your sore? I was peeling scabs off my face, and it made my skin darker. I know you said you feel like you're being punished. Why do you feel you're being punished? With all, Be you, you try everything, nothing works, and you you get these. Crazy I said I feel like God is punishing me because He's trying to make me love myself as I am, right. because nothing works. I don't know, it's just like everything I do, nothing works. Everything has the same reaction. It's, it's my skin will flare. I would red rash everywhere, you know, and I'm tearing up because y'all don't understand what I go through, you know? There is me inside, what I'm dealing with. Nobody knows that. So everybody's just looking on the stage like, oh, y'all shouldn't bleach, y'all shouldn't bleach. You don't know what a person goes through, the reason they get to this point that they want to bleach. Tell, you know what tell, I'm saying? Tell me. You know, tell it's us. just being. I, let me collect myself. It's okay. Just being a child. And by the way, up. before you start, let me just tell you, there's a lot of girls at home watching right now mm -hmm. that feel your pain. Yeah. So when you speak, you're speaking for them. So speak from your heart because you're speaking I'm, I'm, for them too. Okay. Um, first of all, everybody that knows me know I have a tough exterior. They tell me I'm pretty. But I always get, you're pretty to be cute. Um, you're pretty to you, you're a pretty girl to be. I mean, I'm, I'm sorry. You're pretty to be. You're a pretty girl, but to be dark. Mm -hmm. Why I gotta be pretty to be dark? Why I just can't be pretty? You know? Why they always have to, have to add that on? Being a child growing up, we wasn't. You know, we didn't have a lot of money, so that added on. I was always teased. You know, I was always picked at. You know, and I just I didn't feel cute. My mom doesn't know I'm doing this. She doesn't know. She would be hurt. Well, she's going to know now. I, I so wouldn't what tell is, her. She does know now. So what is, what is she going to, what is her reaction going to be with her seeing you on she's TV? She's going to be this? hurt. She's probably going to cry because, you know, like I said, on the outside, everybody looks at me like I'm so tough. I, there's nothing going on inside me. They don't know. What's the most painful thing that you've heard when it comes <laughs> to your skin? 
um, that I've heard, or oh, so many. Um, I think it was mostly coming from like good friends of mine. You know, we were out. It, they were lighter than me, and do I have to say this, Tyra? Because this yeah. stuff hurts. Don't say their names, but just. They were saying, they said pretty much like, oh, all y'all pretty, y'all be straight if y'all didn't have her with you. Mm. You need to do that. You know what I'm saying? So Wait, who said that? A guy said It was said some that? guys. Said that when you were with Pretty much friend. saying like, you know, because all them light skin and I was the only dark one. Mm. Fine. I was the only dark and one. And what that felt like? And I feel like my skin is much darker than everybody else's. Like, you know, a couple of these girls up here, they got pretty fair skin. I wouldn't mind being their color. I feel like I'm tortured in a way because of the, my daily issues or what I'm going through or what I'm trying to get at in life. You know, I just be happy all the time, but nobody knows. Nobody knows what I'm going through. Mm -hmm. Well, nobody. I'm glad that you, first of all, I applaud you for being honest, you guys, and I think we should applaud her for that. I think we should applaud you for that. But one thing that, one thing you keep saying is nobody knows what you're going through. But yeah, you actually some yeah they do. I mean, there's darker skinned, beautiful black women in the audience right what? now. <laughs> you're beautiful. She says nobody knows what she's going through. Sweetie, I understand what you're going through. I'm dark skinned. I have a dark skinned daughter, and I have a uh, caramel colored daughter. My mother is very light. So we range in color. I felt like you felt before, but mm -hmm. you know what? God made me this color, and I love the color that I am, and you should love you. Because if you think about it, at some point in time, what you're doing, going to extremes, may eventually disfigure you, and then you really won't feel pretty. You are a beautiful black woman, mm -hmm. and it doesn't matter. And those people that you're with, my friends are lighter than me, and I have no problem with that. I love it. I love it. I get probably just as much attention as they do. Love you, because yeah. you're beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. One thing, um, we, have, we have to take a break, but there's one thing, and I know we've all heard this before. You've heard, um, don't hate the player, hate the game, right? <laughs> yeah. And what that means is, you know, there are these women on this stage, and as much as I want to go, Rah! And I'm still gonna do a little raw a little later, but, and I, you guys are welcome to do the same, but um, don't hate the player, hate the game. These women are victims of our society, all right? And our society puts lighter skinned women on a pedestal. Let's call it what it is. That is yeah, the truth. Do. You got Halle Berry, you got Beyonce, yeah. you got Ashanti, you got Solange now, you got me. You know what I'm saying? I'm not gonna lie, I 100% understand it. And the reason why I'm doing this show is not to make fun of you guys and to say, you're crazy, but what I think you're doing is crazy. But that's not what the point of this show is. The point of this show is to bring light to this, to our society and how they put light-skinned women at the top. When I do America's Next Top Model, I made it a point. When I sold that show to the network, I told them, I want to represent every single color. And they said, great, Tyler, that's what, you want to represent black and white? I said, no, the shades inside of black as well, right. from the lightest to the darkest. Right. Darker-skinned black women need images of themselves in the media to tell them, yes, you are beautiful, yes, you are worthy. So you are fighting a battle almost alone it is very difficult to continue to tell yourself that you are beautiful when the world is telling you that you are not. So I understand, but bleaching your skin is not the answer. And we're gonna find the answer today. We'll be right back. Up next, and we wanted to see just how far these ladies were willing to go to make their skin lighter. We have to do 40 injections, 40 injections. around the body. Oh. So it takes time. Patients complained about um, skin rash, boils on the skin that are filled with pus. Oh. So you would literally go from the entire great, show great yeah. Yeah. to the hospital and have that procedure done. Oh, look well, yeah. That's something you would do? Yes. Controversial practice of skin bleaching and we wanted to see just how far these ladies were willing to go to make their skin lighter So we set up a social experiment sting We sent them all to a skin bleaching expo, but I have to say that nothing about it was real You hear that ladies? Nothing was real But their reactions at this expo were very real check this out 
We created a fake cosmetics company called Light and Lovely with a line of three phony skin bleaching procedures. One using an injection, one using a laser, and one requiring the patient to undergo a full body skin transplant. Next, we set up a demonstration space inside a local salon and day spa here in New York City. We placed hidden cameras and microphones everywhere and dressed it all up with some pretty impressive props. Then we hired actors to play a doctor, a nurse, and a potential patient. Finally, we were open for business and we brought over our panel of bleaching beauties to see what kinds of physical and financial discomforts they've endured just to have lighter skin. After our fake doctor warmed them up with some basic chit chat, he showed them the first phony procedure, the injection. This is a collagen injection that we use in the skin, mm -hmm. and it looks deadly, but we actually <laughs> inject this laterally into the skin. We have to do 40 injections, 40 injections. around the body, so uh -huh. it takes time. <sighs> Some of these women didn't seem concerned to hear about side effects. Patients complained about um, skin rash, boils on the skin that are filled with pus, sometimes bleeding, <clears throat> excuse me, from the fingernails. They grow back, but in the case of it happening, it's something we have to tell you about. There's temporary blindness in some patients, which heals probably within a week in one eye. Are you okay with needles? Yeah. 40 of them? Yes. That big? Yes. Okay. I don't do anything. That's one option. You do anything. Yes, okay. to get lighter. <laughs> okay. Well, let me show you what else we have. Next up, our bogus doctor brought up in the laser treatment. This actually burns off the outer layer of skin. We take a laser, cold laser, and we actually burn off the top layer of your dermis, of your skin. Some of these women also seemed interested in the laser, despite the warnings about adverse reactions. Um, in some cases, there's been bleeding from the orifices, like the ears or the rectum. The bleeding is not painful. It's not painful bleeding. The people who've reported it, it's just abnormal. You could get strange hair growth on your toes, your buttocks, your ears. Like you can lose pieces of hair from your head, sometimes the eyebrows. Mm -hmm. So this affects hair follicle. Is that worth? Yeah. Okay. Last up, the most extreme procedure of all. It's called Derma Reju. We take your skin, we send it to our lab in Switzerland. We basically create a dress, if you would, of your body with new skin that is toned as you request it. It's the one that celebrities choose, it's the one that everybody wants, it's the most expensive, unfortunately. The full body skin graft operation sounds like the best bet, despite the risks. Some people have blisters or boils when you first do it. You do go under anesthesia, and some of the side effects do include death. I mean, people have died on the operating table. I mean, it's worth it if you're going to get that result that you want. Amazingly, Latavia even agreed to start the surgery as soon as our show finished taping. Oh. So you would literally go from the entire great, show, great show. Entire to the hospital and have that procedure done. Oh, well, yes. That's something you would do? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. I agree. I'm so <laughs> Leticia clearly isn't concerned with the side effects or the cost. This is a very expensive procedure. Mm -hmm. It's permanent. It's, you know, a lot of celebrity clientele have used it, but it's expensive. All she's hearing is how the operation will lighten her skin permanently. I want it really bad. Okay. Really, really bad. It's a commitment. I want to sacrifice car payments and everything. Well, we don't want you to do that, but That's I'm going to show you. Okay. Wow. That was like, uh, that sounded like desperation. You were saying, I want it really, really, really bad. I really still bad. do. And you still do? I still do. So if there was something where you could get that surgery. I would jump on it ASAP. In a second? In a second. Even with the risk of death? I wouldn't risk dying for it. It's not that serious, but it's very serious. I've just contradicted myself, but I'm saying it's not the serious to die for. But because I can would still die use it. creams, you know, creams will still lighten you. It's just going to take a little bit longer. But a full body suit to, get, to tell you this is the color I want to be, and then you just put it on me, let's do it. Let's do it. Um, for the rest of my that's life, for, that's for a lifetime. let's do it. Does, do any of you guys look at that and say, God, I, I didn't realize how, how insane I am about this, and it's severe, and I have a problem? Anybody? No. Um, I thought about it when we got home. I was like, wow, those, are, those surgeries are crazy. But I was willing to choose like the one that would be like the least painful. The shots? I was picking the shots. Do it for 10 years, definitely. 
Yeah. All right, pain runs deep. Um, we'll be right back. Today we're revealing why so many black women are desperate to be lighter and some of them actually resort to bleaching their skin. We wanted to know more about what is driving these women to bleach, so we decided to do a beauty investigation. You guys remember Brie from America's Next Top Model, Salka 5? Yeah, well, I sent Brie out on the street as our correspondent to get some answers. Check her out. Most of these skin bleaching products claim to be intended for clearing up a complexion or even evening out blemishes. So my mission today is to find out, are these products available in all neighborhoods or just predominantly African-American neighborhoods? Harlem. And for those of you who don't know what Harlem is, besides being my hometown, born and raised, it's also a predominantly African-American neighborhood. Do you know any stores around here that I can get skin bleaching cream? All the beauty supply stores, they sell them. Yes, yes, a lot. Definitely, especially in Harlem, there's a beauty supply store in every corner. All right, Tyra, I'm going to go back here into this beauty supply store. It's just a typical beauty supply store in the middle of Harlem, but I'm pretty sure I'm going to be able to find some bleaching cream. So I got my undercover camera. I'm going in right now. Let's see what I can find. Oh my God, would you look at that? There's so many of them. Look at all these brands. I cannot believe this. Hey Tyra, we're here on 59th and Columbus Circle. We moved out of Harlem. So let's see if we can find our skin bleaching cream down here the way we did uptown. Let's go check it out and see. Okay, so here we are. Let me see if I can try to find some of this skin bleaching cream. No, I, I don't see it. There's, there's this hair bleaching. There's no, no, there's, there's no skin bleaching cream. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever heard of skin bleaching cream? I've never heard about it before. Mm, uh, no. <laughs> no, I no? Should, no. No? No. OK. I don't know. From what we saw today, it seems to me that African Americans are targeted more so than white women for skin bleaching products. I love that, Brie. You did such a good job. Give me a hug. I'm so proud of you. Thank you. Good job. And, um, yeah, it's interesting that they say, yeah, that it's for the blemishes and marks. White women get marks in their skin, but they don't have skin and bleach and cream um, in those types of neighborhoods. Um, one thing that, um, and Brie knows this too, traveling for America's Next Top Model, going overseas, um, I would, you know, we travel a lot, and I, you know, I love a drugstore, and I go into drugstores, and in Asia, it is crazy. So it is not just black women that use bleaching creams. It's in India. It's all over Asia. It's in South Africa, which of course is black women. But it is all over the world. It's in Latin communities, in Latin stores. So if you notice the pattern, it's a pattern of women of color that they target for these bleaching creams. Um, how did you feel doing that and going to Harlem, your hometown, and seeing it everywhere, and then going to like Columbus Circle and seeing nothing? You know, I was really disappointed because when I started the investigation, it was new for me. I mean, I hadn't even heard about, I've heard about skin bleaching cream, but it wasn't something that I've actually tried or even thought about doing. And um, when I went, I noticed it was everywhere. There was, I mean, it was actually falling off of the shelves with so skin much. bleaching and cream And the names everywhere. are crazy. The names are Fair and White, Fair and white, and and white Light, Future White Day, Active White. And so it just kind of told me, just with the names, it was just kind of blatant that it was, it was targeted predominantly to brown skin African-American women, almost as if being our complexion isn't good enough. And mm -hmm. so I, I, today I wore my Black is Beautiful button for you guys because I'm also brown skin. And it is very difficult to be a model and be African-American and live in society and be African-American, especially of a darker tone. But you do it, and you do it well, and you represent younger generations that are coming, that are looking up, and so that when they get older, they won't feel the way you do. You know what I mean? It's a cycle that has to be broken. I'm we'll be right back. Do you believe it's better to tell a lie than to hurt someone with the truth? If you lie to protect others, call 1-888-704-TYRA or go to tyrashow.com. Well, you did a really, really good job. I think you, you, you investigated that so well, and you represent beautiful black beauty, beauty beautiful chocolate 
Coco beautifulness. I'm and you make me so <laughs> proud. And and that it was my mission. And you are my mission that has come to life. Thank and you. And it makes me so happy. Woo! Thank you. With us um, is a woman. Sit down. With us is a woman who used to um, bleach her own skin, but she doesn't anymore. No longer. This is a uh, Geraldine. Hi, Geraldine. Hello. So, um, what made you uh, start the bleach? Well, when I was younger, I was teased a lot, and people would use all types of pejorative words to describe my skin color, such as blacky, tar baby. Mm -hmm. And actually, I remember when I was about in seventh grade or so, someone actually said that I looked burnt, and so. Things like that definitely weighed on me and didn't allow me to have such a positive self-esteem. So you started to bleach. How old were you when you started to bleach? About 14. And what made you stop? Well, looking in, inside my own self and knowing that I formed opinions about myself based on everyone else. And I cannot live my life thinking, okay, what this person is saying, oh, this is how I'm going to view myself. Mm -hmm. So it was, and also people were telling me I was beautiful once I started to believe that I was beautiful. Mm -hmm. So I do think it's how you carry yourself as well. Yes, it is, right. isn't it? Right. Yes. With us now is dermatologist, Dr. Janine Downey. Um, now, Tell me about the health of these. Hi, doctor. Tell me about the health of these bleaching creams, especially in the amount that these women are using them, because they think that they're healthy. And I know Latasha, she puts them on her children, four, six, and eight-year-old. Right. Um, tell me, tell us about the, the, the safety and the health. I mean, here's the bottom line. They do market it a lot in urban communities. Mm -hmm. So you see it in, you know, smaller mom-and-pop drugstores, and you see some of the harsher brands. Some of them are imported. They're made in Germany. They're made in South America. So what these fade creams are used for is they're intended for spot treatments, post a pimple, post a mosquito bite, post the mask of pregnancy. They are proper medical uses for them. So I do prescribe fade creams regularly. And I have dark patches on my face, which you can't see because nobody can see them. But there's chemical peels. There's healthier ways of going about this. Are they addicts? Can bleaching become an addiction? It can become mm -hmm. an addiction because if you feel badly about yourself and you have low self-esteem, then you will do whatever it takes, as you demonstrated from the fake doctors. Can this extreme bleaching cause death if it you can. constantly get it, into the bloodstream? It can. It depends on the bleaching agent. Some of the ones that I was talking about that are made in Germany, that are made in South Africa, I did a story back, you know, a couple of years ago, and we looked into this and did research. And some of them have heavy metals in them, tires. They have mm. mercury, they have arsenic in the products. I mean, mercury, if you use enough mercury, it'll shut down your kidneys. Mm -hmm. So then you die of kidney failure, which is not a pretty death. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Hydroquinone is the active ingredient. So your audience, mm -hmm. your, your audience right here and your viewing audience should know that it's hydroquinone that we're talking about. Over the counter is 2%. Prescriptions are 4, 6, 8, and 10%. All right, we'll be right back. Thanks. <laughs> preparing for this show um, something came to me and what came to me is it, it deals with society and society says that certain things are better right so our society says that a very skinny body especially right now a very very skinny body is in fashion right now and we all live in that world but there are only a certain amount of people that go to an extreme where they hurt themselves Right? And we're talking about anorexia and bulimia and chronic exercising and things like that. And that's a sickness. That is an illness. Now we talk about society saying that lighter is better when it comes to black women. And yeah, a lot of black women feel that and have some self-esteem issues because of that and get self-esteem and, 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 and hold on to the handlebars of self-esteem so that doesn't get to them and get them down. But then we have women like you that, cr that crumble under that pressure. And I don't think, now I'm not a therapist, but I don't think it's just about being dark. Because if that's the case, every single dark girl that was ever teased would bleach herself to the way that you guys are doing. I feel that there's something inside as well. Something painful inside that manifests into you seeing it, that, that your pain is all about your skin color. And I think it's so much deeper than that. Some of the, 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 the closest women in the world to me are dark-skinned women, and one of my best friends, Miss Kenya Moore, is Miss USA, and one Miss USA with the most chocolate, beautiful skin in the world. So I encourage you guys to really do some self-reflection and really, truly look in the mirror past the skin, but look at who you are 
and start to touch that pain, not just this pain. Okay, I want to thank Dr. Downey and I want to thank Bree for doing such a great job in helping us out today. And um, wish everybody the best and we'll see you later. All right, first. <laughs>